Hey, what's going on everybody? So we are making this video on this next video series on making this bench. So I had actually started this bench back in December. Today being June 28th. I just finished this yesterday. So I started this back in December because I was resurfacing cabinets. I was leaning over in between these two chairs um, and I was I was paint stripping, I was sanding, and I was then painting again. Um, and I was just, you know, really starting to get my back. So I decided I needed a bench. And around that time, another YouTuber, um, Randall Star, who seemed to be like a master level carpenter, was doing a laminate bench, which is kind of the design that I chose to do. Um, plus, there are many others out there. So if you're interested, I definitely might recommend you taking a look out there. Um, but I needed this bench, and I decided to get this bench just because doing it this style with some two by fours really makes for a strong bench. Um, I think he, uh, Rangel Star, termed it bomb proof, um, but regardless, it is definitely very strong um, and will be able to do whatever I, I'm going to need it to do. Um, but as you can see, I decided to go with the Prentice on my, on my bench and instead of the Columbia. And then we'll talk a little bit about this bench grinder that I picked up on Facebook Marker. But with, without further ado, let's send it. The project began at Home Depot where we went there to buy about 20 pieces. I think we bought 21, 22 pieces. So we had some extra um, two by fours by eight feet. And the challenge was trying to find boards that were not severely warped or bent. Um, so that took a little bit of time trying to go through the pile and at least find some that were satisfactory. My father and I began ripping the boards down, taking off a taking off quarter of an inch on either side to hopefully to try to square them up. Once we had had them all cut, we went ahead and placed the boards in the order that we wanted to. You can see they're numbered here, one through 20. And then we started marking up where we are going to place the lock threads um, through and uh, making sure that they're evenly spaced throughout, which is why you can see the T-squares. We went, um, marked the line all the way across. Drawing the line all the way across helped us to line up the all thread as we did a test fit here just to make sure they fit before we just started the laminated process. When my father and I started this process, we were concerned we probably wouldn't either have enough glue or we would be a little bit too slow. So he and I decided to tag team this portion of it and you'll see here in this next clip. When she was glued down, not only did we tighten the seven all threads down, but we also had uh, these clamps in addition to keeping her glued tight. Once we got the bench back from the desert uh, to its home and ultimate home in San Diego, I ordered the legs and uh, they came in. So I was just doing a test fit here. The legs I went with had the electrical outlets on the side uh, because I knew I was going to want to run power to it. Unfortunately, the legs came in not perfect. So instead of turning these back in, I chose to just paint over them because number one, the manufacturer who I purchased through, through on Amazon was out of stock and didn't know when they were going to come back in. And also when I found these at other locations, they were significantly more in price. So I just chose to paint over them. Even after removing all the glue with the belt sander, I still was left with these areas that were not perfectly level. Ultimately, I decided to go just keep it on with the belt sander and do my best to level it out. And then by the time I finished with this side of the tabletop, I had to then switch it over to the other side. At the completion of the belt sanding, I just wasn't happy with the finished product. And this was the first time, this is actually my first wood product here, project that I'm doing in my, on my own in my own garage, probably since Definitely in my own garage ever, but I hadn't done a real wood project probably since elementary school. Um, so I, just, I saw a lot of people talking about the benefits of hand plane, so I grabbed it and started to go. Although when I say I grabbed it, I should say first I purchased a one off of eBay for about, I believe this one was for probably around uh, $60, $70. Um, and then I just watched a couple of YouTube videos and restored it. And this is the after photo before I got started back on the bench. This was the first time hand planing, so, you know, the one thing that I realized, and you saw it in just about every video, the importance of sharpening the blade. I had thought I was sharpening the blade correctly probably all the way through 
um, until towards the end of the project when I realized how to really to step it up. Um, and, I, and I was doing all the same steps um, that uh, I had seen on the vid videos, but I just wasn't doing them good enough. So it's definitely good to have, if you're an apprentice or a novice like I am, to have a master level carpenter to show you the way in person. But, uh, you know, that's kind of my life, just learning things the hard way. Um, but uh, this this clip here just shows where I was as far as... Um, as I started to go, marking off the different areas and then just hand planing them down. Around this time, I found the Delta 8 inch bench grinder on Facebook Market for 40 bucks. And this was a steal for the comparable bench grinders. I was a little concerned that maybe the half horsepower wasn't going to be enough, but so far it is held up against everything I've thrown at it so far. This was me on the final stretch, just kind of documenting uh, what I needed to get done. All the areas I needed to get done is what you can see in pencil. So this was sort of the, after. this is at my final stretch that once I get all this pencil knocked off, I am done and I'm going to start moving over to the smoothing plane. The two things I want to highlight here is number one, you can see that my number eight Stanley bench planer, a uh, leveling planer is starting to get a little rusty again because that's all the, my sweat dripping on it. So I will be doing a video later uh, on restoring all my planers on. But uh, this particular photo is the next thing is showing is that I was pulling out the smoothing plane to get it ready for the final steps. Um, but before I could start the smoothing plane, I had this one last section of, of leveling to do. And this one section seemed to take the longest time because although it doesn't look like too much here, it took a lot of plane. You basically have to plane down all of the other sections of the bench just to get to this part. And that was the challenge. I finally was just like, okay, I'm done planing. I want to go ahead and put this together. I was off a quarter, correction, I was off one eighth of an inch from one side. And you can see it's probably just the last three, four boards is where it really started to taper off. And I believe this is also kind of what's giving me some of uh, um, the problems at the final assembly. When we countersinked the all threads, we didn't quite get them fully countersinked. So I decided I wanted to go ahead and pull them out drill the countersink in just a little bit more so that there was no chance of snagging them along the way. Not that I would really do that much of a deal, but I just, the perfectionist in me really wanted to be countersinked. So this clip will show the process of me pulling them out and go ahead and countersinking them.
video ended up with me test fitting all the all threads to ensure everything was countersunk and that is going to go ahead and end this video uh, and uh, next video we're going to commence with cutting all the ends of the cutting both ends of the table flush put it on the beeswax and then get into the stain all right i'll see you then thank you